they were all involved with Satan's original rebellion. That's why they're Satan's generals. He trusts them because they were, they were with him from the beginning. His first rebellion attempt on earth against the Lord. And we're looking at now his second rebellion attempt where he's coming now here on earth sending his Antichrist and false prophet, his two beasts, generals, um, Itre and Sinana, on earth to deceive mankind. This is Satan's second attempt. And then when he's loosed after the millennium uh, to deceive the world one more time for a short season, that's his third attempt. And then that's it. That's three strikes and he's out. He's finally gone. He's finally gotten rid of. And so we're in the middle of his second one right now. His second attempt. Because he gets three of them. Uh, and <laughs> he's just a pawn. You know, the Lord uses him just, to, you know, for his own purposes. Uh, and, and so that's why he's allowed to have victories and things. The Lord uses him to test people. Uh, but, but eventually he'll he'll outserve his usefulness and he will finally be judged and cast into the lake of fire and we'll never hear again of Satan again. Um, uh, hey Sherry, I was watching 60 Minutes last night and they had a piece on Sheikh Mohammed, the leader of Dubai and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. He seemed a possible candidate for the Antichrist based on his agenda and charisma. What do you think? Could he be Maitreya? Uh, no, no. When Maitreya comes, you'll hear Iran going nuts. Uh, I'm in a brain cell in, in Iran, and, uh, all of them, uh, it's, he won't be. He's, he's just one of them. And, you know what, we need, so badly, we need some, uh, some, some, uh, Arabs to stand up over there and, uh, get some orgone out for us. We will send you the orgone. Just give us your address. If you live in Iran, Iraq, Dubai, uh, Ethiopia. If you live in any one of those Muslim nations, we need to get Oregon over there. If you want to keep the jinn out of your country, uh, then contact me so we can help get uh, get that area Oregon to keep the jinn out of your country. <laughs> Satan's welcome party. You crack me up. Yeah, <laughs> we are. We're Satan's welcome party. Uh... If someone who practices witchcraft and say they are a witch casts a spell on you in your life, can the spell take effect? No, just rebuke it and renounce it in the name of Yahushua. Uh, no, no, you know, I've had people trying to kill me for years with their little spells. It's like, oh, give me a break. Uh, if you think you're being attacked by witches and spells, just rebuke anything seen and unseen in the name of Yahushua. That's how crazy you can get. You don't have to be specific. Just, you know, if you... <laughs> that's all you have to say. Uh, I rebuke all attacks against me in the name of Yeshua, seen or unseen, whether I know they're there or they're not. <laughs> I rebuke them all and command them to leave in the name of Yeshua. That's all you have to say. I mean, don't even spend your time and thoughts on that stuff, because, I mean, the Lord will protect you. Uh, but take, uh, you know, you can take an active stance against it if you think someone's coming at you. And, and do something about it. That's admirable, because so many people just want to sit on their butts and do nothing. At least you can, you can raise your voice and rebuke it in the name of Yeshua. I mean... It's, it's, you know, our work is so easy. It's just having to do it. Some people just, you can't even get half a Christian dumb to do anything for the Lord, you know? Uh, seems like network TV is filled now with supernatural shows. It is, with humans that have special powers. Yes, yes, yes. What do you think the agenda is for this? It's for the, the X-Men, the X-Kids, the morphing stuff. I don't let my kids watch that morphing and that witchcraft cartoons because they're conditioning your kids. Uh, most kids today are are much more ready for the arrival of the Antichrist than any adult I know, <laughs> because they're so they've been conditioned with all their cartoons over the years of morphing and changing and uh, the special powers and stuff. That's all part of the, the Lucifer sideshow. When Maitreya and this this Sananda Asu Emmanuel, this Jesus Christ, arrive together. There's going to be supernatural miracles all over the place. They're going to be able to charm the world with their supernatural strength and abilities. Uh, and the force is with them. And so that's how everyone's going to think, oh, they must be from heaven. They must be from God. Look, he made a blind man see. Look, he cured that woman from cancer. He has to be from God. You know, you're going to hear this all over the place. This is the majority of the world that's going to fall in love with them, folks. I hate to tell you, but it's true. The majority of the world is going to love them. And by their charade that they're, they're beings from heaven. Because it's this minority, this handful of the Lord's people who will refuse to believe and they will be uh, the, at the end of persecution for Satan. Uh, that's why they're going to have martial law. That's why they're coming after the Christians. That's why you have uh, the, gr the green, red, and blue cards and blah, blah, blah. 
uh, because of this handful of people they're going to have a problem with. See, we don't get the majority at this rebellion, folks. Uh, when Satan rebelled the first time around against the Lord, he only got a third of the angels. Two-thirds did not fall for Satan's crap back then. Uh, <laughs> they didn't fall for it. He couldn't deceive them. They weren't moved by his lies and his charm. They stayed faithful to the Most High. Now this time around, the numbers are turned around. This time he gets two-thirds. He's going to get two-thirds of the world's population. But there's only going to be one-third that don't fall for his crap. And so the numbers have changed. They've reversed. And so you're going to be in a vast minority this time around. And sometimes you can't even think and imagine. I don't even think it's going to be a full third. Um, because it's so few now. How many don't have their heads in the sand and won't be deceived by him? I mean, you, 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 you know, they're almost just like death waiting to happen. You know, because, you know, you, you warned them about Bush and they wouldn't believe you about that until they saw it with their own eyes later. And then you warned them about Ron Paul and they're still not going to believe that. They have to see it a couple of years down the road. They just need to die and go home. They're so stupid. And there's, you know, there's, there's so many, there's so many Christians today that are, that are just so, you can't use them. You can't use them. They're worthless for the Most High in, in producing fruit for Him and getting work done in the last days because their, their, their heads are in the sand. They, they claim they love the Lord, uh, but they can't be, they're of no use to, for Him or to Him because, you know, you can't teach them. They're so full of errors and apostasy and they like being that way. They're deceived and don't know it. That's, and you can't reach them. You can't reach them. And so then you have this other half this little fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. Even the Bible codes calls it a fraction. Just a tiny little fraction of people with their eyes open who are who are getting ready for, uh, for Satan's welcome party. <laughs> yeah, come to earth. <laughs> we know you're coming. We can't stop you, but we're getting ready for you. <laughs> you know, a tiny handful of people. You know, that's just a tiny little fraction. Uh, because so many more are just going to die and go home. You have to prove your love for the Most High by losing your head at a guillotine. Uh, because, you know, and, and for what? What kind of fruit do you have on the earth for the Lord? You know, you, most of these people spend half their time arguing and fighting against other Christians instead of doing something for the Lord. Uh, and so, yeah, they're just worthless. Uh, another email from a listener. Lots of Christians in do not think the national idea of the ship is the mark of the beast. They say you have to be willing to worship the beast, taking numbers, not that. We all have SS numbers already, and that is not the mark. How do I respond? By deception, Satan deceives the world. They're already deceived if they already think, no, that can't be it. <laughs> By deception, Satan deceives the world. And you know what? It doesn't matter what it is. I've always said, look at the resulting thing. Uh, you cannot buy. You cannot sell. Uh, you cannot work, you cannot go to the bank, you cannot buy gas. You can't participate in society without this particular whatever it is that they're going to enforce. Because that, because that is the mark of the beast. So let's say uh, our social security numbers today, fine. We have them. Most of us lose our cards, have to get another one or whatever. But we can still go into a grocery store and buy food. You can go, in a, you can go to, to a bank with a license. You can... You can shop in society without a license or a social security card. Uh, okay, so, so something's going to happen to where all of a sudden we can't do a thing without it. Okay, so is it going to be this national ID card? Or is it going to be a chip? You know, what is it? Which, what's it going to be that they're, that's going to be enforced that you can't buy food anymore, you can't drive a car, you can't go to a bank Whatever that thing is that you have to have to in order to do those things, then that's what you need to stay away from. <laughs> if that makes any sense to anybody. Uh, because it's not necessarily, okay, it could be this barcode, it could be this na 